I said it on this damn pod a while back. I could smell everything Tony was doing because I've been gone a little bit on the cruise. I got confirmation. I stated that Tony Storm's character is being written by somebody. And it is confirmed. It just seems like Blackpool Combat Club is kind of lost in the limbo here. They've been like feuding with a lot of teams. And I, I just sense there's like no direction where they're going with Blackpool Combat Club other than we still got to keep these guys on television. Um, but I do see FTR pulling out the win on this one. Mr. Hargrave, I think I missed the introductions, and I will uh, say hello and uh, let you have the next go. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm disappointed that we're not seeing the culmination of what we saw. The majority of the build of Blackpool Combat Club the last couple of months has been with uh, CMLL, which culminated in their own event. But we spent so much time with them on TV. I felt like that was headed towards the pay-per-view, but then we've thrown in FTR. Now, the good news is, is that FTR versus the Blackpool Combat Club is an awesome match. We saw that timeout on TV, so I'm really looking forward to the rematch on that. But I agree with you that the Blackpool Combat Club has really felt adrift and it's directionless. And I'm assuming that they're going to take the loss here. Uh, because it doesn't make it. I don't know why they would win. I guess, are they going to go challenge the Young Bucks? I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself. I just don't see the direction in that. Uh, you probably want to keep FTR as your top guys. Mm. I see what you did there. I hear you. Dusty, what are your thoughts, um, and who's going to pull out the win on this one? You know, you say that the Blackpool Combat Club is pretty adrift right now. And I agree. I think they've been getting their camera time and that's really all that's owed. But if anyone's been pretty drifty, Dax and Cash have really been out to lunch. There hasn't been anything storyline to sink their teeth into. So it's kind of a, a good match. We're going to get a banger. We're going to enjoy it. But where is the the legs to it. I don't know if anyone should win. I would like it to be FTR because I just feel like FTR versus Christian and Edge as heels at Wembley is my far out prediction and I want to get there. Meet Madness match. Uh, I, I'm a big fan as everybody you know Connor knows I'm a big fan of big guy wrestling. Um, I've mentioned that to a couple of our guests that have been on here, you know, uh, uh, Eric Redbeard. I've mentioned it to um, Roche when he was on here that I just, I love it. Yeah, those are some of my, my favorite stuff, which side side note, the um, earthquake episode of dark side of the ring is premiering next Tuesday. So make sure you guys catch it. It's going to be awesome. But uh, for me, this, this is a setup for Wardlow. I mean, you have to get the guy on a winning streak, don't you? I mean, he's somewhere lost right now. After that promo he had on Dynamite saying, you know, I don't get respected, that I'm getting overlooked at this place, cutting that that promo, that heel promo saying, I'm just going to destroy everybody. I don't care who you are. It's almost like a setup that Wardlow needs to beat the two biggest guys in front of him. And we've seen this Wardlow powerhouse Hobbs dynamic at Face of the Revolution ladder match uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it was last year or the year before. And so, I mean, they've crossed paths before, and I think Lance Archer has wrestled both these guys in singles. I can't remember. But I feel like this is just a nice way to get Lance Archer on the card But yeah. because we haven't seen much of him, which is nice. We get to see him back on the card a little bit. But, yeah, no, I, I see this as a push for Wardlow just to go over two more big guys. Nice. So who you, so you're going with Wardlow for the, for the win? Mm-hmm. Mr. Hargrave, what do you think of the meat match? I am not the biggest fan of big guy wrestling, but I am a big fan of these big guys. And I usually like to take the outside prediction, but even I cannot believe that Lance Archer is going to walk away with this one. It's going to be Warlow all the way. He's got he's got to get the win. It's 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 obvious for me. All right. All right we got two. We got two for Warlow. Dusty, what do you think? I think it's pretty predictable when they slide in a question mark person and it gets announced as Lance Archer, <laughs> you know, he's taking the fall. We're going to see our first title 
defend it on the card, and I think it would be the TNT title with Christian Cage defending against Daniel Garcia. I'm actually excited for this match. I, I have been a big fan of Daniel Garcia since his performance during the Continental Classic Tournament. Um, I really think he stepped into his own when he broke away from 2.0 and kind of, and the Jericho Appreciation Society and kind of just moved away from it. But I do feel this is a, just another win for Christian Cage. As much as I'm really hoping Daniel Garcia pulls the upset here, you know, because kind of predict that maybe Adam Copeland Edge comes on, kind of distracts the family, and Christian gets distracted, and Daniel Garcia takes advantage and wins the title. I just don't know because I don't know with this booking. And with, with me, I, I feel Christian Cage is going to win, but in my heart, I would love to da- see Daniel Garcia win. All right, Mr. Hargrave. I am going with my heart 100%. Daniel Garcia is going to take it. Christian has not been on TV as much on either show. It's just it's going to the background, and um, maybe his stable is going to be focused on more going forward, but I really think we need to put the spotlight on Daniel Garcia. We've been doing so much work with him, and if he loses here, it's going to be absolutely devastating. So even though I I do believe that you might be right and that Christian might be undefeatable because of something to do with Edge, because it is really odd how Edge is injured, seems to be kayfabe injured. That's Mm -hmm. really suspicious, Um, but I, I really want to see Daniel win it. Yeah, this match was kind of thrown together uh, by the man himself, Mr. Don Callis. Uh, this is Will Ospreay against uh, Kanosuke T- uh, Takashita. And I'm actually excited for this. I, I honestly think this is going to be the match of the night, uh, just based on these guys' histories. Uh, I mean, they're both power-hitting wrestlers. I mean, obviously we saw what they both can do in New Japan. I mean, this is just a match made in heaven that didn't need to be made. But they needed that spot on that card to say, we need a matchup that's going to steal the show, but not too much, but want it, want it to happen. We need to give Will Ospreay a big match for his next um, AEW pay-per-view that he's officially signed to our contract. But we got to give him a good opponent. And I think this is what it is. And I think this kind of pushes a little bit more of the infer, in, 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 infer fighting interior fighting of the Don Callis family where yeah Osprey may be part of it but at this point maybe he doesn't want to be in part of the family and just one does his own thing and this is where you put Will Osprey as a face in AEW and mm-hmm. I do see Osprey winning this one he ain't gonna lose I don't think he's gonna lose uh his first uh uh, a, uh pay-per-view being fully signed to AEW so I do see Osprey winning this one and maybe some infighting happen with the Don Callis family but again, I'm not a writer for AEW, so I don't know what the plan is for it. But I, I do see Will Osprey winning this one. You just you just play one on TV. Yeah, I just play one on TV. <laughs> Mr. Hercrave, Osprey. Uh, one with. If you think you've seen someone be dominant in AEW, you haven't seen shit until you see Will Ospreay in AEW because this boy is going to be dominant for a long fucking time. Ain't nobody beating him. This dude's a big, big fucking star. They signed him away from the WWE. They're going to rub that shit in. This dude's going to be AEW champion. He's going to be AEW everything. He's going to hold all the fucking belts. Will Ospreay all goddamn day. This match is going to be phenomenal match of the night. Agreed. Dusty. Oh, man. Hargrave, you got me hyped. You got me hyped. Osprey and Connor, in case you forgot that little wrestler from Japan, Okada, <laughs> both coming. And today it's announced WWE got the hottest free agent from New Japan, Tama Tonga. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's you a guys won. all around the damn table. Um. I don't know what they're trying to do with this match. It's going to steal the damn show. It's going to be viral. They're going to destroy the internet with some of the shit they pull off. I think it's going to put the proper eyes on what Takeshita's capable of for storytelling because that's what Will does. He takes these guys and he's able to bring them to a North American storytelling. He just does it. It's just how he operates. So, obviously, like, I don't think I can remember Konosuke's last loss. I, mm-hmm. I I was trying to think of it leading in, and I don't remember. 
So if it's going to be anybody and you go alpha male of the Don Callis, it's Will Ospreay, and I would prefer him go face, but I don't think that's happening because they just spoiled that with Sammy. You're part of the family. You're not part of the family. You're part <laughs> of the family. We did a painting for you. I don't know. This will be another titles match. Uh, this is uh, going to be Eddie Kingston versus Brian Danielson Ooh. for the Continental Crown Championship. Uh and there's a stipulation that if Bra- Daniel Bryanson loses, he has to shake Eddie Kingston's hand, uh, almost as similar as to what Jericho and Kingston had at, at their match, where Jericho couldn't shake the hand. But I do see Daniel Bryanson shaking his hand. I'm going to go with Eddie Kingston. You just put him in, in winning that title. I, I think you don't take him off of him too soon. I think Daniel Bryanson's okay not winning a title for his time being in AEW. I think his goal is just to give give the product, make the product look good for what he's got going, you know. And obviously, who knows when he's going to be completely done with wrestling, uh, with everything going on with him. Uh, let's not forget that also he's got a lot of stuff backstage working, you know, backstage as both a locker room leader and working creative stuff with Tony Khan and everybody back there and especially QT Marshall coming back. So he's going to be helping a lot backstage as well. As soon as his career is done, as much as we don't want to see Brian Danielson be completely done with wrestling. I mean, there is a time where, Hey, you're going to have to step aside, but you could stay with us, work with us backstage, become a producer if you want to, but I am going to go with Eddie Kingston here. I think it's just too soon to take off that trip, uh, that continental crown from him. I think you got a little more leverage on him. I think he may hold on to it till the tournament next year, or he may even lose it surprisingly if they can set up a good match with him at Wembley, depending on who they can get to set up against him at Wembley. I think that's where you, he loses the trip, uh, the continental crown at. Hmm. Mr. Hargrave. King of the bums all the way. Eddie Kingston's winning this one. And after Daniel Bryanson takes a loss here and after Claudio and Moxley take a loss here. I would really like to see Yuta talk shit about the rest of the BCC and leave the unit and 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 then disband and then do more interesting things. Yuta's still there? Yuta is the pure champion, dude. He's the only guy who's winning in that faction. <laughs> and that's what I want to see. I want to see him rub that shit in their face once these guys lose at this pay-per-view. Can I move on to our surprisingly our only women's match on this card and that's the right. AEW women's title and that's timeless tony storm versus diana parasso my god this might be the best title defense tony storm has in a long time i'm a huge fan of diana parasso when she debuted on dynamite in jersey i was stoked i was like oh my god the virtuosa is here i love to work in tna uh, she was a three-time Impact Women's Champion over there. She is so she's very good. She's almost on par, I would say, with the Serena Deep when it comes to the technicality of wrestling. I would say that. And for me, Timeless Tony Storm. We've said it the, this whole time. The best character work Tony Storm has done in the longest time in her career. Unbelievable. The scene that you saw when they had their matches and they're both passing each other on the ramp. And it's split screen where it's black and white for Tony and cle- and regular screen for Deanna. Yeah. I'm sold on that. And I hope that's almost like what the match is when they do the split camera where oh, it's in the cool. middle of the ring and oh, Tony's on this side in black and white and Deanna's on this side mm-hmm. in color. And then even when they show Tony like on her own, you need to go to black and white. But I'm going to go with Tony Storm on this one. And here's my reason why. March 13th. Boston, Massachusetts. Yes. Mercedes Muramone coming to AEW, going to be put on top of that pedestal to take that title from Tony Storm. That is basically what they're planning around it. They're planning on taking that title and giving it to Mercedes Monet. I don't know if it's going to happen at Double or Nothing or Wembley. Don't know when, but we're going to see Timeless Tony Storm against Mercedes Monet at some point for that women's title. So for now, I'm going to say this is going to be a really good women's match, and Timeless Tony Storm holds on to that title. Nice. Mr. Hargrave, do you agree, or do you have a different opinion on this one? 
No, I I fully agree with that. Uh, Tony's great. I I don't think that, um, and and as great as Deanna is, I don't think she's going to come in here and just take the belt off of Tony. If anyone's going to come into the company and take the belt off the champ, I agree Monet would be the one to do it. Although I don't like thinking about that at all. That doesn't sound like fun. So I I don't know. I'm hoping that something else happens in between that uh, but I do believe that's inevitable. I do believe Monet is going to have that belt. I, I don't know what else she's going to do in AEW other than run the place. Uh, but right now, it's Tony's world, and I'm enjoying that, and I just want to enjoy that for as long as we possibly can. So I'm hoping that she just takes the win here, and we just keep going with this amazing gimmick. All right. Dusty. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, <laughs> I got to be honest. I said it on this damn pod a while back. I could smell everything Tony was doing because I've been gone a little bit on the cruise. I got confirmation. I stated that Tony Storm's character is being written by somebody. And it is confirmed. RJ City's behind everything she's doing. Yeah, you bet. I asked him right flat out, and he went, No. I'm I'm a purveyor of ideas, and then she takes them. <laughs> oh, it it, it so, had his fingerprints all over it from day one. All he, over. He was seeding it on Hey W for God's sake. <laughs> yes, yes. So He's like, would any I, of you want to do like an old timey kind of gimmick? <laughs> so he dropped that baby face gimmick where he was gonna be the Tony Storm, and he did two trailers oh. and. As soon as I saw it, and it was whatever happened to Babyface, and that's Tony Storm. That's timeless. So I knew he was involved, and I got confirmation from Santino. I got confirmation from George, and he played off that he's not involved, but wink, wink, he's writing it all. Um, I don't think you put Mercedes in that that picture yet. There's going to be time for it. But when Mercedes Monet shows up, there's only one person I want to see in the ring, and I want the rematch with Soraya. Yeah. yeah Broken yeah. neck on a pole match. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we're going to have uh, Orange Cassidy defending the international championship against Roderick Strong. Um, this has been built up. I, I think Roderick takes this one. Um, just because it'll make at the, at the very end of the pay-per-view, you need to have at least undisputed kingdom look strong, at least a little bit. Cause you already have, um, um, Kaven and Bennett as your ring of honor tag champs with Roderick taking that international title. Now you're just one step closer of getting the world title. And obviously you're going to have Wardlow win in the middle of the night at, in the night too, at that meat madness match. So now all the guys involved in you Undisputed Kingdom are going to have victories or titles around their waist at the end of the night. So obviously you're going to get some interference back and forth between the Kingdom and the best friends coming out and all this stuff and some tomfoolery is going to happen. Yes. But obviously I see Roderick Strong winning the international title. His character, since he went with the neck brace and then losing it and kind of like more dark demeanor now, I feel like he would do so much wonders with it with the title and the title defenses and matches he would have on, on in AEW would be great. Um, I've been a big fan of Roderick Strong for a long time. I think he was probably one of the better members of when they were in NXT together. Um, and even before that, um, I saw him a little bit when he wrestled. I saw some old videos of him in PWG when he wrestled there. He wrestled pro wrestling gorilla a little bit. So I've been a fan of his for for a while. I love his style. Um, And honestly, I think Orange Cassidy has done enough with that title, being a two-time champion, um, that I do believe maybe he needs a break from that title. And maybe it maybe changed, uh, even though some kids love the character of Orange Cassidy, like to see more of a darker side of Orange Cassidy. So I think, you know, seeing Roderick Strong take that title, I think would maybe turn Orange Cassidy a little more aggressiveness and maybe see a character change in him. Mr. Hargrave. Yeah, when Roderick Strong uh, wins the belt off of Orange Cassidy, I'm not even going to entertain anything else because Adam Cole's done very little in in AEW except he he made a very bold mission statement about what's going to happen. All that stuff's going to happen. 
And I'm excited for when Roderick Strong is going to win this title because then we can do cool stuff. Like you said, he worked with so many of these smaller companies. One of those companies was Ring of Honor. One of an uh, one amazing match in Ring of Honor that I went back and watched recently was Roderick Strong versus Jay Lethal. They did an hour long like Iron Man match. This was like, I don't know, maybe like five, ten years ago incredible love to see that again Roderick Strong is a crazy workhorse I want to see more of him and and let's give Orange Cassidy that break that he was supposed to get with uh the, with Moxley uh kind of kind of flubbed up there a little bit with uh with uh having to drop the title back to him back in the WWF days we know that they would use house shows to play off of new gimmicks and see what they could do on this cruise Orange Cassidy and Trent went heel during a match against the Guns. And we're talking Rocky Romero was heel. All three of them in the middle of the match swapped. The crowd was behind it. It was very weird. It was some bizarro land. And watching Orange screaming at Aubrey Edwards and watching him do this this cheap little douchebag shit Make me say, this is what we need on TV. He could be the biggest prick if he wants to be. Now, I think it's time for that because, like you said, the kids are all into the gimmick. And, I mean, I've got a seven-year-old who thinks Orange Cassidy is the greatest. But I want to see him hate him. I want to hate him. And I think that might be the perfect mode for him. Adam Cole has made a lot of thoughts that he's going to change the world with his crew. This is one of them. It makes sense. All the gold on the team. Yeah, I'm in on it. And this is crazy to think, but I do not think the AEW World Championship will be the main event. It's going to be this match right here, and it's going to be a triple threat match between um, Hangman, Adam Page, Swerve Strickland and Samoa Joe. Now this one's a toss up because they've been playing the injury ankle, uh, injury, uh, the ankle injury to Hangman Page, and I don't know if they're working that as a story type to make this a singles match between Joe and uh, Swerve, or just going to keep a triple threat. I guess we're going to find out tomorrow night on Dynamite when Hangman Page is going to address it. I don't know if it's where they're going to go with it, but if it stays this way. Hangman is eating the eating the pin, and honestly, I I'd, if it stays a triple threat, I'd like to see Joe hold on to the belt because he just won it at a World's End. Also, he's just a really good leader. I mean, you see some of the some of the stuff. I mean, let's go back to all um all in last year, in in Wembley. That match between him and CM Punk was almost in jeopardy until Joe stepped up and said. No, we're going to do this match because there's 80,000 people out there that paid to come see this match between you and I. This is our Ring of Honor days right now, and we're going to go put on a show. Joe is the one that saved that match. That shows the good leadership he has backstage and the respect he has. That's why I wasn't upset that MJF lost it to him at World's End, and it went to the uh, a good guy like Joe. So if this is a triple threat match, I see Joe pinning or – choking out hangman page after page kind of isolates swerve like to the outside i can see like hangman page like uh do like the lariat like the buckshot lariat knocking swerve out to the outside and as soon as he gets back up joe just locks him in and and chokes him out um if this is a singles match between swerve and joe i wouldn't even be upset if swerve wins (laughs) i'm just saying because this kind of because like we said Hangman and Swerve probably have the best story going against each other right now. And we talked about it before about almost the double turn of where Paige is becoming a heel and Swerve's becoming a face. Um, But I I honestly think nothing's going to come of this injury angle. I think we keep it a triple threat unless they do change it. But if it stays like this, I do see Joe uh, retaining this title. Great. Good points. Mr. Hardgrave, your thoughts on the triple threat? 
you went and said all this nice stuff about Samoa Joe that I perfectly agree with. And, and then they're doing this injury angle with hangman or, you know, whatever they're doing there, whatever's happening there. And I, I really wanted to go into this thinking that hangman could win this because I really feel like rooting for him. Uh, hangman's become like my favorite wrestler, which is really weird. Um, but he's really grown on me. I mean, the hardcore match with him and Swerve and drinking the blood. I mean, look, maybe I'm biased. I'm a vampire and whatnot. We drink blood over here, and I just think it's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I assume Joe will win this one. And, uh, you know, for all the reasons that have been stated and will be stated. Dusty, I'm sure you have a, a point on this one. Nah. <laughs> I mean, in all actuality, the easiest way to say it <laughs> is Joe's going to win the match because he's deservedly so the leader of the locker room, as our brother said. We know what he did at Wembley. We know the backstage. And show me somebody that's more believable as the champion on the roster. You walk into a bar and he starts hitting on your girl. Anybody on the roster you could swing on. Maybe not Hobbs, but Joe. Joe would kick the shit out of anybody, and he's believable as a champion. Let him carry the title. Uh, this is going to be Sting's last match ever. Uh, it will be him and Darby Allen defending the AEW World oh Tag Titles against the EVPs, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, ladies and gentlemen, the EVPs. Uh, still, hopefully, still wearing those blood-stained uh, suits I hope uh, so. instead yeah. of, but making sure they look red instead of brown, like they did on Dynam. Uh, on, on, on Rampage, you can tell like, like the poop. actual blood. They from, looked like, like poop. Like, um, it did. <laughs> the fake blood. Um, but yeah, no. Um, for this, I, this match can go either way for me um, because you have so many directions you can go, no matter the outcome. Uh, one would be like Connor has been hinting at the last couple of weeks. He wants to see Sting retire as a champ. Um, so maybe Sting pulls out the victory with Darby Allen and he retires as tag champ. For me, as much as a fan of Sting as I am, I don't see that. I'm, I'm sorry, Connor. I love you, buddy. But I don't see Sting winning this match, retain title, and retiring. Because also you look at the devalue of those tag titles – uh, if Sting wins and has to retire it, you know, as a champion. But for me, this is a perfect setup for the EVPs to have that massive heel run as tag champs and setting up a, a story down the line of either, you know, Sting's sons coming in and winning a tournament or something like that. Maybe you have another tag team like, hey, let's throw this out there. Let's run it back. Let's do FTR and the Young, uh, and the young Bucks once again. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe we see another, maybe we see, I don't know, Undisputed Kingdom versus the Young Bucks. But then again, who knows? But you've got so many tag teams that are out there. Right now, they're putting a lot of emphasis on top flight. They're pushing top flight pretty well. They're also pushing private party a little bit now that they've reunited. So you've got all these young tag teams. Um, obviously, you can see top flight. You know, you got the Hardys still in there and everything like that. So obviously you can go any way with the tag titles if they're put on the EVPs. How do you yeah. feel about this one? I struggle with yeah. predicting this. I think this match by definition is difficult to predict. I believe they've done a very good job setting this up so that we really don't know what's going to happen. If it's the last night match of the night, it's even more difficult to predict because are we really going to send everybody home devastated with a defeated Sting in the ring and the heel Young Bucks standing proud. How how do we move forward with that? Now, I do believe that the Young Bucks are going to have those tag belts in some way, shape, or form at some time. I don't know when. Um, if if I just go with uh, what I've seen Tony Khan do, I, I feel like the uh, vacating the titles and then starting a tournament for those tag belts uh, makes a whole lot of sense. And the Young Bucks could have a lot of fun rigging that tournament or whatnot. But uh, I want to throw this over to Dusty. I like what uh, Dusty's got a weird brain. And I want to know, how do you send <laughs> how do you send people home happy with the Young Bucks uh, crushing uh, Sting and Darby, who are probably the most beloved tag team that AW's ever had? Hargrave, I'll take it. I'll take it. You set me up and I'm swinging. All right, so here it is. 
they have their matches, they get their spots, and Sting does some stupid ass shit that that old bastard shouldn't be doing. All 100%. of a sudden, Darby's getting thrown around. He's tied up. What the hell? All right, and then they get the pin. Doesn't matter how it happens. The EVPs win. They stand over them as they're beaten down. You look over. There's Lex Luthor. Luger. <laughs> Jesus, what am I on my comic? Lex Luthor shows up. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, he's shaved head and everything. But there's Luger sitting in the corner. They're looking to him. He's sad because he's not getting out of his wheelchair. And then all of a sudden, Darby reaches over to Sting in tears. They look each other in the eyes. Sting hugs him. Everybody looks at him. The confetti blows. He has to go out with a loss because that's the rule of wrestling. You don't walk out on top. That doesn't make any sense for the entire world of wrestling. You have to pass the torch. And the Bucks can do that when it's their time. And Eddie Kingston will do that when it's his time. So that's how it goes down. If you read the Players' Tribune that got released today, it's it's an amazing little... Um, place that athletes can go to write articles and it's free press for them and it's a huge response but Darby actually did one and he talked about Sting and he put him over like this was his hero and usually when you meet your heroes they fail you but this one made me proud to meet a hero so it works Sting takes the the L but I do see Ric Flair screwing them over but he's going to be close enough for Lex to hit him. And then he drops. Yeah. I could see that working. Either way, the you want to make the crowd cry. You want to make the TV cry. Unlace your damn boots. Mm -hmm. You can take 30 seconds to take off your boots and leave them in the ring. Not one person in that crowd will be sitting in their seat. It, the EVPs and Ric Flair are gone. Yeah. And... It's just Darby and Sting, and he's taking off his damn boots, yeah, and I'm going to sit there and cry like it's Mark Henry swerving me. Yeah. I, I will not cry when the Young Bucks win, but I will cry when Sting takes off his boots. Stop what you're doing, baby, and follow Mr. Hargrave from Parts Unknown, if you will, baby. I've seen the demon's face. Mark, you one half of party parties, they went up to the grave diggers and... Watch another video or be cursed.